Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Why the Long Face, a podcast with me, Horse O'Keefe. You're all very welcome. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for coming. First and foremost, get all that out of the way. Um, For anyone who doesn't know me, my real name isn't obviously Horse. My name is Owen. I'm 24. And I'm just a young fella that has a lot to say. Now, I don't have a lot to say on anything particularly important, um, but I do have a lot to say. I've, I just, I like talking. That's pretty much, pretty much why I'm doing this. I just love talking. I never stop. I never shut up. I'm just mad for conversation. And that's, that's pretty much all this is. I'm just seeing this as a way of talking to a lot of people at one time. Um, and like that's that's all I want to do with this. It's pretty much just going to be me talking about things that I like or things that I'm interested in, and hopefully opening up dialogue with people about those things. Whether it's film, whether it's music, whether it's just chats about mental health, or just like I don't have any qualifications to talk about or anything. Um, I'm just a guy. I'm just a lad. I, I'm 20, like I said, I'm 24. I haven't done lots of my life, but I'm willing to share the small bits of experience I have with people, regardless of their age. If you're a young person, if you're an old person, if you are a young person who wants to be older or an old person who wants to be younger, it doesn't matter. You're a person. You have experiences. I have experiences. And that's all I want this to be is just me sharing what I have and people sharing what they have with me. Because at the end of the day, that's what that's what life is. It's just a series of experiences. And I have experienced stuff in my 24 years that someone of the previous generation might never have experienced. And vice versa, someone who lived in the previous generations have experienced things that I will never have to experience. But it's by talking and it's about kind of finding similarities that that you bond with people and that you get to know people and that you learn and that you grow. I know we're not even five minutes in and I'm already getting kind of, uh, what's the word? Oh, Jesus Christ. Stand by for technical difficulties. No, see, this is also going to happen a lot because the whole point of this is that I'm not scripting it. I'm talking off the cuff. I don't want it to be this really rigid scripted thing. I want it to be kind of loose. Like, like a conversation. Like you don't script your conversations that you're going to have in the day. You know, you don't wake up first thing in the morning and say, Right, when I get into work, I'm going to see John, because John is the first desk, and we're going to talk about the dances. The dances. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I forgot. (laughs) I forgot that we had transported back to a time where we go to dances after work. (laughs) You talk to John. Talk to John about whatever you want, to be honest. It doesn't... You know, that's up to you. But the point is... You don't script your conversations. You don't like script your day. You can plan your day, but realistically, you have no control over that. Like you don't. It's not like a rigid script, and that's why I don't want to script this. I want it to be natural. I want it to just be me having a conversation about whatever topic I decide on that week. That's probably the only thing that would be anyway scripted is what I'm going to talk about. And that is a nice little segue into what I'm going to talk about this week. Um, I mean, this week I am just going to talk about myself, um, kind of why I'm doing the podcast, um, what I want from the podcast, and where I want to be in the future. I suppose for me, this podcast is, it's just another medium for me to use to get my name and to get my work out there because I love creating content whether it's photography whether it's like films whether it's just short videos for Facebook or like a video for TikTok I just love creating because that's what that's what gets me up in the morning that's that's what that's where I get my drive from is creating and just putting stuff out there um you know Sometimes it's serious stuff. Sometimes it's silly. It's silly little videos, you know. And depending on what the the 
piece is would really depend on what I want the emotional response to be. But I just want to connect with people. If I just had a blanket term for the whole thing, I just want to connect with people. I want to help people. So if it's just like a silly little comedy video, if someone sees that, they've had a bad day, if I get one little chuckle, just one little chuckle out of them, you know, then that makes me feel good. And if it's a more serious video or if it's like a, a chat about mental health, you know, if I can help someone realize something about themselves or their mental health, or just even give them that little bit of encouragement that they're not, they're not on their own, you know, then again, that, that's my job done. That means I've helped someone and that's, that's pretty much all I want to do. Um, like I've been making videos and, and content for a, probably as long as I can remember. Like when I got my first phone, that I, like it had like a really, really shitty little camera on it, but that didn't matter. That didn't stop me making silly videos with my friends, like out in the yard. Um, and I think I've known since then that I've always wanted to make content and make videos and just, I mean, you could look at it from like a psychological standpoint of maybe I just really need gratification and validation from people, but that's not really a conversation to have with ye. I think that's something I need to discuss with a professional at a, at a later date. So for, for now, we're just going to say that I enjoy I just I do and I do I enjoy the process of creating work and then putting that work out there um, and like I said just maybe sometimes people get a little laugh off it or it just helps them realize something and that's also what I want this podcast to be is me talking about my experiences and maybe you find something in that that you've shared like every week I'm going to probably try and talk about something different but overall I think the whole like the the, the major takeaway from this podcast will be mental health because anyone that knows me knows how important mental health is to me um like when it comes down to it if you strip every single piece of work i've done if you just strip that back to basics it's all about mental health in one way or another whether it's depression or anxiety or grief or or any of these things it, it always comes back to that and that's that's what i want this podcast to be about like more than anything else is people can listen can realize that they're not alone and i want to build up this community of listeners who will support each other and then you know like if you can if you can go home listen to this and you can see that see i, I don't know i don't know how many listeners i'm gonna get so let's just say i get 10 listeners that is a little community of 10 people who no matter what age or gender or fucking anything like job marriage status it doesn't matter at the end of the day it'll be 10 people who you now share common ground with and i would like to think that eventually i'd be able to get feedback from from my listeners and you, you can become more involved and we'll all be able to help each other with our with our little problems because I know it's one of those like old sayings, but a problem shared is a problem halved. And it genuinely is because even the therapeutic practice of just getting it out, of just talking about it, helps. And funnily enough, I've that's probably another reason why I'm doing the podcast is so that I can get some of my stuff out. I can just talk about my own little, little problems, like little things that have just been niggling away at the back of my head. Because again, if you get it out, you, sh you can find someone else that's going through the same thing or at least has gone through a similar thing and you can help each other. And, you know, I think that's probably one of the most beautiful things that has come from me doing my work is I made a video, I want to say about six months ago, and it was a video of a photo book that I made. And the photo book was about me and my struggles with mental health over the last 13 years and you know it was it was a really tough piece to make like it was tough making the book in the first place because obviously there's like uh photography in it that's kind of very hard hitting but it was the text the, th the text in the book is for me like the the hardest hitting part because parts of that were from like diary entries from when I was like 10 to like 13 
and you know it, it was my first time properly putting it all out there for the world to see about my mental health and you know it was it was really tough and it, and then doing the video of the book was bringing it all back up again but I did it and I'm really really glad I did it because I know of at least two people that as a direct result of that video have gone to counseling and I'm not sitting here saying oh look at me I'm so great but you know what that is it's a pretty good achievement to have it might not necessarily have any worth to people but it means a lot to me that something I did work that I did has helped someone go and get help and it has helped someone open up their own dialogue about their mental health because mental health is so important and like it's I think mental health is at like the forefront of a lot of stuff at the moment but I think there's still so much that people don't understand about it I think people are scared of it both people who are going through mental health problems but also people who are like somehow connected to a mental health problem so like their friend is going through a mental health issue or their child or their parent and and that's hard too and I think people forget about that that it's it's mental health might affect you but it also can affect the other people around you who don't necessarily know how to help you again that's why we just need to talk about it we need to open up this dialogue so that it's not as much of a taboo subject it's not this big thing like if you go into someone's house or and you say oh i have a headache straight away there's like there's no big deal made it's just would you like a glass of water would you like a painkiller and it's as simple as that i want society to get to a point where you can walk into someone's house and say oh i'm feeling a bit depressed i'm feeling a bit anxious i have this going on and straight away someone will react with i'll pop the kettle on we'll have a chat now obviously it's going to take time not everyone is open about talking about their mental health and that's that's fine because it is scary but you're not alone you're genuinely not alone like i've been in like the pits of depression and thought no one else knows what i'm going through right now no one has a clue but then when you're out of it and you've kind of got like that clearer conscience and you've kind of like you've got the hindsight you realize how and i don't mean it to sound harsh but how silly that actually is like i can guarantee you every person you know has struggled at least once in their life with mental health and if they say they haven't they're lying because it's it's natural like our brains are just another they're just a part of us and depression is just a chemical imbalance it's all it is it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you because there's there's not and i hate it when people say there's something wrong with me because that makes it sound like a like a flaw like a fault and it's it's not if anything if you have depression like it it sets you apart it means that that you like you care that you're that you that you worry and like i understand that people obviously you don't want depression and that's that's fine but people focus too much on trying to cure depression and i just did air quotes but you can't see that because you can only hear me but i put cure in air quotes because you don't cure depression like depression never goes away you will always have depression you might not always be depressed you might not always be anxious but you will always have anxiety and that's another thing that needs to change is people focus on getting rid of depression or getting rid of anxiety or getting over grief like none of this stuff goes away you learn to live with it you learn to control it as opposed to it controlling you like i'm a huge movie buff so a lot of my kind of terminology comes from film if you look at your life as if it's a movie as if it's a film or a, a, like a tv show or, a, or whatever you want it to be okay you 
auditioned for your part, say when you were born and you got the role of you. And for a certain amount of your life, yeah, it was scripted. Like you went to school because you had to go to school. You did your homework. You did your after school bits. You did your chores, you know. And then you kind of, you, you start growing up. Then things become a little less scripted. And you're not entirely sure where you want to go or what you need to do. So maybe you try a new hobby and it's not for you. That's okay. Because ultimately, the things you tried and you didn't like still helped you. You know, not everything has to be a negative. For example, probably the best example, I went to college for three years. Um, and you, I, I really enjoyed college to a certain degree. Like I enjoyed the experience of college, getting to meet new people, getting to create work. But deep down I knew it wasn't for me. And when it came to going back for fourth year, I genuinely had this pit in my stomach. I felt like awful about the idea of having to go back for another year. Um, so with the encouragement of my friends and my partner and my parents, did I say parents? No, my my parents as well. Shout out to Tim and Noreen if they're listening. Fucking better be listening. Anyway, um, with everyone's help, I decided to drop out. Now, because I have depression, immediately I saw that as a failure. Because I didn't do, I didn't do the college thing and I failed because I left. But in hindsight, and this is what I'm talking about, about flipping the script. There are so many positives to come out of that experience. That they really do outweigh any negatives. And to be honest, I even hate the word negative because that implies that something was wrong. And like nothing was wrong. There was nothing wrong with the fact that I left college. And I've rambled a lot now. And I probably have missed the point of what I was going to say. But that doesn't matter. That's fine because I sound good doing it and I sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, I remember now. I'm, talk life is, I'm saying that life is like a film and you're the main character. And you can flip the script on pretty much anything that you see as bad. Because if they compiled a movie of your life, say when you die, and I know that kind of sounds morbid, but if they had to fit your entire life into like an hour and a half or two hour plot none of that bad stuff is going to be in it none of the small little things or the small mistakes are going to be in the movie like the fact that you try dancing or I'm obsessed with dancing today what is what is my obsession with dancing maybe maybe this is something I need to look into is I seem to be quite obsessed with dancing so we're going to come away from the dancing because I'm genuinely getting concerned about myself. Um, so you, you try a new job. And you're there for two, three months. And you realise it's not for you. Then leave. Because that two to three months at the end of the day, it's not going to be in the movie. It's not going to be in the movie of your life because it's it's not important. Like... Any little small mistakes or small decisions that we make in life, like, they're not going to ultimately affect the outcome that much, you know? Like, I think we dwell, well, maybe, not, maybe not we, I know I overthink the small decisions because I put off the big decisions, but like, your movie is going to be about you and ultimately what you did as a person or what you've done as a person and I don't want you to like feel pressured that you have to do something amazing or something substantial with your life because you you don't if you just like if you get up every day and 
just do you just be yourself be true to yourself that's going to make you stand out that's going to make you a much more fulfilled person because you're not trying to impress anyone you're being the character you're writing your own character and you're playing it the way you want to play it not the way you think others want you to play it and if you look at it like look genuinely look at it that way look at it as if you're like you're like like you're in your own Truman show that you are being recorded 24/7 what would you want to see your main character do or more importantly if you don't feel like you as a person have been represented in film or in TV you go out and you live your life the way you would like to see a character played to portray you and I realize that probably sounds like insane or it sounds even slightly confusing but even just 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 for one day okay anyone who listens to this I want you to go out pretend that you are the main character in a movie or in a TV show and live your life whatever way you want to live it dress how you want you know go to that coffee shop order that coffee that you've always wanted to you know go to the clothes shop and buy that dress or buy that cardigan or buy those pair of shoes you know and walk with your head up high because if you're on camera and your head is down like you're just going to make you redo the shot anyway so you might as well get it right the first take so moving slightly onwards from uh from the whole film analogy like i will come back to that as time goes on um it fits into uh, like more stories but i don't want to go into all those today what i want to talk about today is new year's resolutions because now I realize it's closer to the end of January but I think people put too much pressure on themselves for new year's resolutions or for just resolutions in general I think cuz sometimes people choose like these big massive grand things like giving up fags or cigarettes or like you know, it's like a total lifestyle change and I'm not for a second saying that these things aren't feasible of course they are but if you set yourself this massive task any small failure then you're, or any small kind of slip you're going to be so hard on yourself and I think if you're trying to get back to yourself or you're trying to change yourself or you're, or you're just trying to even find yourself you have to start with the small things first um and one exercise that i i do so you get a, a pen and a piece of paper and you write down you write down just five things that you can wholeheartedly say about yourself like good things about yourself and you're probably sat there and you're like yeah I could probably do that or Jesus no I could never do that but the point is again you immediately go to like these big grand things and it, it, it doesn't have to be like your first thing can be I get up every day and it, as it, it can be as simple as that because sometimes people can't get up sometimes you might not be able to get up because you might be sick you might be unwell you might not be feeling yourself so even like literally I woke up today or I woke up and got up every day this week that is one thing you know it could be I make a good cup of coffee I'm a good friend I can play guitar even if you can't play guitar I can play two cards on guitar you know strip it back to like the absolute basics and write out five things just five things that you can wholeheartedly say that are good about yourself and then underneath that you write down f 
five things that you would like to be better at. So, and it can even be like an extension, extinction? Jesus Christ. Half an hour into talking and the words are turning to mush. It can be an extension, there we go, an extension of what you wrote in the first place. So say you wrote, I can play three chords on guitar. Say, I want to learn four chords on guitar. Say, if you're if you're a good friend, say, I want to be an even better friend. Or I want to make more effort with my friends. Like any, again, it doesn't have to be massive things. It can be, I want to make myself a home cooked meal twice a week. Set it out just something really basic and hang hang that piece of paper somewhere. Hang it somewhere you're going to see it every day. Because the more you see it, the more you read it, the more ingrained it will become. And then you give yourself like a, like a week or two weeks and you see have you made progress with any, any one or all of those five things. And if you have, then you can move, you know, it's like the whole point is then you can start moving the things up. So eventually you could have 10 things that you could say wholeheartedly about yourself. And then you write another five things and you go about it that way. And I think like the, th the point is, it is very, very hard to sit there and say good things about yourself. And I think that's just something that's like fundamentally Irish is that we can't take compliments like at all. Like I see it all the time. Like even with myself, like someone will compliment me and say, Oh, that video was, was very good. And I'd be like, ah, sure. Yeah. Like it was grand. Like, um, or like someone gets a haircut and you're like, Oh my God, your hair is like amazing. And they're like, Oh yeah, no, it's grand. Like it's fine. Like it's not arrogance. It's not rudeness. And it doesn't make you full of yourself to compliment yourself and to be nice to yourself. And that's also something that needs to change. There's a difference between being arrogant and having self-confidence. Like being full of yourself and being confident in yourself are two very different things. I'm not saying you need to go around the place like bragging to everyone about everything you've ever done in your life. Like that's not at all what you need to do. You just you need to be confident in yourself. You need to find who you are and like that whole thing of writing out five things that's just a way of getting your brain to think about who you are as a person and it's also a good way of figuring out where you want to go as a person and like where your priorities are at and you don't have to show this list to people that's the that's the thing i'm not it's not like a I'm not like a teacher. I'm not saying write out five things and come back to me next week and tell me the five things. I don't need to know. Like, because my five, like what's important to me might not necessarily be fundamentally important to you. Where I have my values might not necessarily be where you have your values at. And that's, that's okay because if everyone was the same, life would be very boring. Like I'm fully aware that my movie will be very different to your movie. I'd like to think that mine would be some sort of... Actually, I'm not even entirely sure. Because there's a fair few like dark parts that would make it like a drama. But then there's also a lot of funny parts. So it would be like a... It would be like a dramatic romantic comedy, maybe. There's not a lot of action. I don't get into many fights or many shootouts or many car chases. So... That side of it would be quite boring. Uh, but again, who knows? I mean, I'm only 24. Like, you never know what's going to happen. There, I, I could have a plethora of car chases coming my way very soon. Who knows? Um, and even, even that as an exercise on its own is a good way of, again, like getting your head together, thinking about where your life has gone, and where you want it to go. So. Take it like. Bang. Today. Today is the end of your movie. 
everything up until now, what would that movie be? Would it be a comedy, an action, a drama, a thriller, a horror movie maybe? I don't know what, what people's lives to be at or what they'd be doing. But And then if they made a sequel starting from today onwards, would the genre change or would you want it to change? Um, again, I don't, I don't necessarily know is it a healthy way of thinking that my brain is constantly has this idea that my whole life is a movie and that I'm constantly being recorded. Uh, but it works. It's just my way of of contextualizing everything in my life. Um, I really didn't mean for this first episode to get so existential, but look. It has, but again, this is this is what I wanted. It's not scripted. It's just off the cuff. It's me. It's horse. It's me, and it's 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 talking, random bollocks about life and movies. But that's me. This is an insight into me. I mean, like for a long time, I was convinced that my life genuinely was a TV show somewhere else because it always seemed like something was happening, something was going wrong, or there was some sort of life drama. And I was convinced that my life was like a Truman Show thing, but it wasn't broadcast in like Ireland or anything. It was broadcast in like Germany. And the show was called Das On, and it was like this really funky theme tune. And I made, I actually made like a logo for Das On, so that like when something would go wrong, I would just attach it to like the Snapchat when I was telling people like, oh, today so-and-so had an argument with me over something stupid and I put that on on it and it just became this thing um like I'm about 70% sure that my life is not a, a, a German TV show but I mean I can't be sure um I suppose I'd like I'd just like to say thank you as well because it's because of all of ye that I'm making this and I'm, I'm sure that there's a degree of, of people who are listening who are people that I know in real life who are family or friends and I'm hoping that there's other people who are listening from like TikTok or from Instagram and the fact that I'm kind of now able to merge these two worlds together into one and kind of talk to y'all at the one time is is it's to be honest it's pretty fucking great um but it, it's it's because of ye like as far as like the TikTok Instagram side goes like I just started doing TikTok during lockdown as as a way of keeping myself sane just making these silly videos or like posting videos of me singing or whatever now I have like 20k followers which is mad like just there's 20,000 people have followed me and watch my videos for whatever reason well, I know why, because some of you find me funny, some of you find me attractive, some of you find me both. So if there's anyone from like that side of my life here listening, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. If anyone from my family is listening, I swear to God, if you use this as a way of slagging me at the next family event, I will kill you. Because that's not what this is. It's not another excuse to bully on. Okay? But... If if you're just listening to support me or whatever, again, thank you. And I mean, in the nicest, nicest way possible, I owe this to a lot of a lot of women because pre-COVID times, one of my favorite things to do was like was like go to a party, but like I'm not on about like a party late at night in a pub I'm on about like the parties that would happen in the middle of the day at like someone's house so like do you know like a kid's birthday party or like a communion or a confirmation party or do you know what as morbid as it sounds even like the afters of a funeral um, do you know you go into the house and there's like sandwiches and like the tea and the buns everywhere and you know, like the full spread is out and everyone is just chatting away. Um, and obviously, like there's men at those parties. I just end up not talking to them because it's generally 99 times they're talking about sport. And 
I don't I don't talk about sport. I don't watch sport. I don't play sport. I I don't do sport. Sport just isn't for me. So I end up talking mostly to the women. And I have found that I've been told quite a lot that I'm interesting to listen to or that they just genuinely enjoy my perspective on things. And to be honest, I enjoy my perspective on things because I feel like I have a unique way of putting things. Funnily enough, I've actually been told that by at least two counsellors in my life as well. There's been times where we've ran over time on our sessions because we've just been chatting and they genuinely are intrigued by the way I talk about things and put things. So thanks to everyone who's just who has supported me and has continued to support me. Or or basically thanks for listening to me when I start when I start talking shite, when I start rambling. Thanks to everyone that that listens. Thanks to everyone that supports me. Thanks to everyone who who has allowed this to be this, who has allowed this to happen. I wouldn't do this if I didn't think people were going to listen. Well, at least I hope people are going to listen. Um, like, as the episodes go on, I have plans for guests. I have plans for episodes on specific things. Like, next week, I'm just talking about film and cinema and what what that means to me. And like the week after is going to be about music, I think, but don't don't hold me to that one. Um, so be sure to like send me a message or an email or 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 in anything, depending on who you are or or what like what way you have of contacting me. Let me know if you've listened. Let me know what you think. Let me know if if there's anything you want me to talk about in particular. Because like I said, I don't have plans as such for every episode I have ideas of what I'm going to talk about but as you could clearly tell I ramble like a lot and if you want me to ramble about something in particular just like let me know because I don't I don't mind I like I said I just want to share experiences and I want other people to share their experiences with me because at the end of the day, that's like, like I said, like that's all we have. We just have our life. We have our experiences, and I think we owe it to each other to share them, so that we can make each other's lives a little bit easier. Because like, even people you don't think you have anything at all in common with, I can guarantee you, you do. You have at least one shared experience with everyone, somewhere. No, I'm not saying that like go out and like try and befriend a Nazi because obviously like th- that's not great and um, we don't really support them but what I'm trying to get at is that I think we focus too much on our differences and not enough on our similarities so that's pretty much all I have to say for for today's episode anyway I think I've said enough I think I've rambled enough I think you've probably listened to enough as well um but I feel like it's definitely given you a good insight into what this is going to be about. Um, and that's, again, like the whole point of this was that I was just talking and rambling. Um, but I've discovered new terms and new ways of putting things today alone just by doing this. So this is as much for my benefit as it is for for everyone else's. Um so next week I'm going talking about films and like movies and kind of movies that are important to me. Um, and so if you like, if you want to message me on Instagram or anywhere else that you have me, depending on who you are or whatever, let me know in a message what movies or movie is important to you and why, just in like a sentence or two. Um, I'll obviously keep it anonymous if I'm reading it out or whatever. Um, I just want to see what movies are important to people and why Um, because I just think that would be kind of interesting and it's a good just again it's just a it's something easy to kind of get conversation going about so that's what I'm going to do next week Um, for now that's it I'm signing off again I don't think I can say thank you enough but I will and I'll keep saying thank you Um. 
but I hope you enjoyed. I really, really enjoyed it. And just take it handy. Mind yourselves.